One ACU student killed and 15 injured in a major accident this weekend. Tonight, the story of what happened on the scene, the university crisis response, and a reaction from the students and faculty. I'm Farron Salee, and with the help of the JMC Network, we bring you this special report. Friday, November 4th, had a promising start for the students of the Department of Agriculture and Environmental Science. But at about 3.20 p.m. on their way to their annual mission trip, things took a tragic turn. The bus traveling south on Highway 83, carrying 12 students, three faculty, and a faculty spouse, veered off the road and hit a concrete culvert. The bus then flipped end over end, ejecting most of the passengers. The crash proved fatal for one student, 19-year-old sophomore Annabelle Reed. The 15 survivors were sent to four area hospitals. Some remain hospitalized, while others returned home the night of the wreck. This weekend, we were able to speak with a few. In a matter of seconds, a service trip turned tragic. The ACU bus crash only involved a handful of students and faculty, yet sent shockwaves throughout the entire ACU community. It began as a routine trip to the Medina Children's Home, as Mandy Wilson, junior animal science major and crash survivor, explains. And we headed south, and we were all talking and laughing and, you know, carrying on like you always do on a bus. None of us were buckled in, except one of the professors. But as the students settled in, the unthinkable happened. Jason Iris, an environmental science major from Bermuda, recounts the events. I was reading my book and I remember uh, feeling some bumps in the road and I looked up to see what was happening and I saw us kind of going off the road. I thought we were going to pull back onto the road but we didn't and I saw the culvert coming towards us. And we, and we hit that with the front right side of the bus and as we flipped up, I said I just hit the ground in the aisle and grabbed the seat that was across from me and held on to it and that's when our bus actually flipped and started rolling. And I just remember telling myself over and over again to stay conscious and to hold on and to stay conscious and to hold on to the seat in front of me. Moments later, as Wilson came to, she began to observe the situation. As I turned behind me, that was the bar ditch and all through the bar ditch was just all of our stuff and just bodies, you know, lying everywhere and all the girls lying there. Um, in obvious pain, a lot of them not moving, and of course the whole top of the bus basically torn off. She quickly took action and got people away from the bus, but soon encountered the crash's sole fatality, Annabelle Reed. When I found Annabelle, she was still breathing, but she had a lot of trouble breathing. Um, she had some very severe internal injuries. She was not conscious, nor was she ever conscious from the time that, that motion stopped to when she was pronounced dead. So I don't believe she ever felt any pain whatsoever. But I don't know that we could have done anything for her. Her injuries were so severe, I think, internally. When the police covered her up, they covered her up with the coat. And I, I just I couldn't really believe it. it was, I just was thinking, how are they going to feel? And how are they going to deal with the situation? Dealing with this situation on a personal level is hard, but university leaders know that this is a time that people rely on them to do their job. These are the people that we expect to have the answers at a time of uncertainty. That there'll be a pretty quick uh, calling together of a number of people from different areas of the universities to sort of create an emergency response team. Part of that team was sent to the Shannon Medical Center in San Angelo the night of the crash. I heard I, about the accident initially about 4.30, actually out at the uh, championship soccer tournament, and it wasn't too much after that time that uh, we did confirm that it was uh, a group from the Agriculture and Environmental Sciences Department. That team also includes the University Media Relations, Student Life, and the Police Department. Well, the ACU Police Department is the central hub, if you will, for uh, crisis management on campus. I think we've learned from past incidents uh, it's not a police department issue, it's a campus issue. And, and we immediately, probably within 30 minutes, had all of the players here at the police department that we needed uh, to manage this incident throughout the evening. Former ACU President Dr. Royce Money recalls a similar emergency during his term. We had a, an, an anthrax uh, scare on the campus. This emergency response team didn't miss a beat. The crisis response plan worked very well. One different way ACU used to get the information out to alumni and students was through their emergency blog. 
That blog had over 10,000 views in the first 24 hours, and university officials are constantly looking for new ways to get that information out. In moments of weakness, ACU students come together to strengthen each other. I had the privilege to speak with students and faculty about the endurance of the community. I didn't believe it was ACU. I was supposed to be on that trip, and it canceled this morning. And Everybody loves the company. We're like a big family. So it's like losing a sister. We just wanted to make sure everyone was okay here too. And we had just come from Hendrick, so we wanted to get a good feel of where everybody was and be supportive and come out and make sure that we care. Meanwhile, more than 1,000 students filled the concrete seats of the amphitheater for a prayer vigil. To sit beside someone who you don't even know and pray with them for the people and for um, Annabelle's family and for Annabelle, um, it was amazing. And at first I didn't think it was real. I came home from running and working out and logged on, on Facebook and saw all these um, statuses about praying for ACU and the agriculture department. And I said, oh wow. So I jumped in my truck and I went straight to the ag department office. Um, I was met there by police officers and professors of the department. Um, and we were trying to piece together what was going on with people on the scene and um, students and professors and where they had gone and trying to account for the people that were there. It just acted as best I saw fit. As of right now, even just in the library, you can feel um, kind of like sorrow. And I think on Monday, especially during chapel, we'll have a time to remember Annabelle. And that's exactly what happened. Monday, students and faculty alike attempted to regain a sense of normalcy at the only time that all jobs are set aside, chapel. Someone once asked C.S. Lewis, why did the righteous suffer? Why not, he replied. They're the only ones who can take it. The chair of the Department of Agriculture and Environmental Science describes his first view of the scene of the accident. You know, we were, we were in shock and just couldn't believe the, the injuries that, it, that happened. Uh, then to see that picture and think, in some ways, how fortunate we were that the injuries weren't worse. They're, they're terrible as they are, but to see that picture almost makes you wonder how anybody survived. As the campus mourns the loss of one, they're grateful for the 15 recovering. And throughout the days following the accident, one word that stuck out the most was family. We came together and I think that just really shows who we are. Um, we're not just a student body or um, faculty or staff, but it's really a family here. While the tragedy has tested the faculty, staff, and students, it has brought us together in our gratitude for those who walked away and together in our grief for the loss of one of our own. As we conclude this report, we pay tribute to the life of Annabelle Reed, to the joy she brought to others, and to the dedication she had to her mission. This past Friday, 16 members of our family embarked on a mission trip. They, like all of us should be, were enthusiastically engaged in fulfilling the mission of God. And may we all remember that in the world that we will have trouble. But in Christ, we have peace. She was a wonderful, wonderful person and really true love, oh man, in love with the Lord. At one point we were talking, this is a couple weeks ago, she said, no matter what happens, the only thing that we are promised is God. God has got to be our first love. God has always got to be our first love. And I think that that's what relationship with God is all about. And he's got to be our first love. And I think that's something that was the way she lived her life. And that's what she'd want people to, I think, one of the many things to know is like, fall in love with God.